All right, in this section we're going to look at um, how to do some basic operations with complex numbers, so adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing. Um, a lot of this is going to be just kind of an extension of what we already know um, about adding and subtracting expressions and multiplying and dividing, and, and in particular the expressions with radicals, because of course j is just the square root of negative 1. When we add and subtract uh, complex numbers, we're just going to do the addition and subtraction on the real parts and on the imaginary parts, kind of like seeing them as like terms almost. So uh, this is going to be 3 plus a negative 5 because we are adding these. So that's why I'm adding those. Um, and then plus 2j plus 7j. So we have negative 2 plus, and 2j plus 7j is 9j. Of course, those parentheses up there are um, unnecessary, but they can help uh, just kind of group those uh, terms together. So there's the sum. Um, if we're doing some addition and subtraction, uh, it's a little bit more complicated here. They've given us the expressions in terms of radicals, you know, using the, the square root of a negative. The first thing I'm going to do is just simplify, simplify these radicals. So we know that we can pull out a j when we see a negative inside. That comes out as a factor of j. So we have 3j times the square root of 4 minus 4 minus, and then 6 minus 2j square root of 5, uh, sorry, square root of 25, of course that will simplify to 5, minus j times the square root of 81. Now I'm just going to simplify these radicals. The square root of 4 is, of course, 2, so we have 6j minus 4. Uh, the square root of 25 is 5, so we have 6 minus 5 times 2 is 10j minus 9j. I'm going to distribute the negative, and then we'll kind of combine like terms. Then we're looking at a problem like we saw in the last example. So 6j, I'm going to get rid of all the parentheses. 6j minus 4, and then minus 6, uh, sorry, minus 6 plus 10j minus 9j. Uh, my real parts are negative 4 minus 6. My imaginary parts are plus 6j plus 10j minus 9j. So we have negative 10 uh, plus 7j. Okay. If we're multiplying, we basically already know how to multiply them. That's the good news. Um, I'm always, when I start with these uh, complex numbers, always going to kind of simplify and write things in terms of j first. But then we're just using the distributive property that we know and love and that we've been using for, you know, a long time now. So uh, this I'm going to rewrite as, let's see, the square root of negative 4 is 2j. So um, we have 6 minus 2j. And then the square root of negative 9 is 3j. I'm going to distribute this 3j. So we have 18j minus 6j squared. Um, now I'm just going to simplify using the fact that we know that j squared is equal to negative 1, right? That's our new definition for this chapter. So this is that becomes a positive 6. I'm going to write this as 6 plus 18j. It is customary when you write the complex number to put the real part first. If you wrote 18j plus 6, that would be fine, um, but uh, I'm going to sort of stick with the convention of, of writing the real part first. Um, so here's another one. Uh, in this case, we're going to again distribute, but it's we're going to it's a bigger distribution. We're going to just use FOIL or FOIL method, or I'm going to make this little uh, chart that I or the table that I usually make to help me organize that work. So we have two plus three j, and we're multiplying this by one minus five j. 
So let's see, across the top we've got 2 and 3j. Across the bottom we have negative 10j and negative 15j squared. j squared is a factor of negative 1, so this becomes positive 15. Now we have our like terms along both diagonals. So this diagonal gives us uh, negative 7j. This diagonal gives us 17. And so that means that the product is 17 minus 7j. Doing some division. Again, we already know how to do this. We did division with the radicals last chapter. And we know that when we are doing division and we have radicals in the denominator, what we would do is multiply the top and the, do top and the bottom by the conjugate. Um, in this case, we know that when we have an expression with j, that's just a radical. It's a square root of negative 1. So the same technique will work. Um, and we're going to multiply both the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate. So in this case, in this example, we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by 3 minus 4j. Um, we've got some foiling to do, so I think I'll do that uh, on the side. Um, so, or maybe on the bottom here. So the numerator, 7 minus 2j, 3 minus 4j. Uh, we get, let's see, 21 minus 6j minus 28j and a positive 8j squared. And again, j squared is negative 1, so 8j squared is uh, negative 8. Again, we have our like terms along both diagonals. This is, let's see, a negative 34j. And this is uh, 13. So on top, we have 13 minus 34j. And in the bottom, we have 3 plus 4j. 3 minus 4j. Now let's keep in mind, you know, we're multiplying the top and the bottom here by the complex conjugate because that's what will get rid of the radicals, or in this case, get rid of the j's. Because we're multiplying the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate, in the bottom, when we do the multiplication, we should just get a real number. There should be no j left by the time we're done multiplying here, and that's a good check to have and keep in mind. Um, so let's see, across the top row, we have 9 plus 12j on the bottom row, minus 12j, and then minus 16j squared, which is positive 16. Notice that the complex uh, parts here sum to 0. And 9 plus 16, that's 25. So on the bottom, we just get 25. Um, now, here we have the, the quotient here expressed as a fraction, 13 minus 34j all over 25. They said express it in rectangular form. Now, rectangular form means, you know, a plus b times j. And technically, if I really want to put it in rectangular form, what I should do is split up this fraction and write it as 13 over 25 minus 34 over 25j. Um, that's kind of important in that... Um, if I wanted, you know, if I were thinking about this as a complex number and I wanted to know what's the real part, the real part is 13 over 25. The real part is not 13. The imaginary part is 34 over 25, not 34. And it's easier to tell when we write it in this form here than if we leave it as the one big fraction um, uh, over here. All right, we're going to do some more. So we've got some more division here. Um, so there's a couple things, right? We're adding some fractions, so we know we need a common denominator. We also have um, complex numbers in the denominator, so we need to 
I guess, sort of rationalize, right, um, or make those real numbers. Um, so I guess we could attack it from any, you know, in, in either order. Um, we could get a common denominator first or we could rationalize first. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rationalize first. So um, if I multiply by the complex conjugate in the first fraction, that would be times a negative j on the top and the bottom. And uh, in the second fraction, I would multiply by 3 minus j. Now, there's not a whole lot of work to do for the first fraction. On top, we clearly have negative j. And on the bottom, negative j times negative j is a negative j squared, which is a negative of negative 1, which is positive 1. Now, up top, I've got the product 2 times 3 minus j over 3 plus j, 3 minus j. We're going to distribute on top and a foil on the bottom. So we have 9, 3j, minus 3j. And then j times a negative j, there's a negative j squared, which is positive 1. Um, so again, we see the complex pieces sum to 0. Our real pieces this time add up to 10. So the bottom, the denominator of this fraction, uh, the bottom of this fraction is 10. Up top, I'm going to distribute. Uh, so we have 6 minus 2j. And now get a common denominator, times 10 times 10. So we have minus 10j plus 6 minus 2j all over 10. And I'm going to combine the like terms, the imaginary parts up top. So we have 6 minus 12j over 10. Now we can simplify further. Um, and if I wanted to express it in rectangular form, I would do the same thing we did upstairs in the last, uh, sorry, in the last example. And this would be 6 over 10 minus 12 over 10j, and we can reduce these fractions. So we get 3 fifths minus 6 fifths j. Okay, now here's a fun one. We're going to simplify this expression. We've got all kinds of powers of j, and I'll tell you the hard way to do this would be to do like uh, an insane amount of foiling, you know, like set up those crazy tables for like four terms and eventually raise everything to the sixth power. I don't want to do that. I refuse to do that because there's an insane way to do this. Although if you have a lot of time on your hands and you want to try it out, go for it. Um, but the if I want to if I want to do this in the most efficient way possible, the first thing I'm going to do is just simplify these powers of j. Now remember from the last section when we were first in class or when we were last in class together, uh, we talked about how we simplify powers of j. There's only four distinct powers of j. We've got j to the first which is j, j squared is negative 1, j cubed is negative j, j to the fourth is positive 1. And then we use this uh, to simplify everything else. So 3j squared, that's 3 times negative 1, minus 2 times j cubed is negative j, plus 5 times j to the fourth is 1, minus 2 times, now j to the fifth is just j, because now we're back, like it's sort of a cycle, right? So this is equal to j to the fifth. Um, and then we're raising all this to the sixth power. I'm going to simplify inside. Negative 3 plus 2j plus 5 minus 2j to the sixth. Oh, the 2j and the minus 2j, those cancel. Uh, so we have now just 2 to the sixth power which is 64.